Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the United Church of Clinton. Pastor Marilyn is uh, has the Sunday off, so you're stuck with me. Uh, Bob, with some. Uh, Hello, so, Bob. <laughs> Hello, Gloria. Uh, there is a night of remembrance to be held next Sunday at 6 p.m. There are forms located on the side altar for those who have gone before us that, want, that you want to remember. Any kind, human or not. Please fill out and leave on the side altar. There's also a Google document available on our website. This Wednesday, the Girl Scout troop will be here at 5.30. Thursday, Halloween night, we'll be passing out Halloween candy at the Haskell Lab entrance. November 3rd, 2 to 5, there's an open house at the Parsonage. Next Sunday, we're hoping for some new members to be in, 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 uh, initiated in, uh, in, in worship. <laughs> Pancakes and sausage after worship that day, that's good news. 4.30 on next Sunday, the Girl Scouts will be here, and then again, six night of remembrance. There's a NAMI family support group here on the November 16th, and December 6th and 7th is you know what? German Christmas market. Any other announcements? Did I miss? No. Oh. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Halloween night, we're passing out candy at the Haskell Street entrance. Where? Haskell Street. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I know we did that last year. And yep. And heard anything about it. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah. apparently the plan. After our pancakes and sausage next Sunday, we're going to have just a quickie little German Christmas market meeting. So maybe it's during the breakfast, maybe after, but we're going to meet. Good. Anything else? All right. So, <clears throat> good morning, everybody. Good morning, Gloria. So, we will now um, prepare ourselves for worship as is our custom with the ringing of the bell and some um, music from Kate. you to stand for the call to worship. Look to the Holy One and be radiant. Bless God at all times. We, we praise, praise God who is with us. us. We, we honor, honor God, God who sustains, sustains redeems, redeems, and delivers. Look to the Holy One and be radiant. Boast in the Holy One. We, we seek, seek the Holy One, one who hears our cries with grace, grace mercy, mercy, and compassion. Look to the Holy One and be radiant. Magnify God with me. O oh, taste and see, hear and proclaim, touch and know that God is good. Bless the Holy One. And now we will join our voices in song. And this morning we start with number 90, 90 in our hymnals. 
Come, Christians, join to sing. What a great title to start singing to, first thing in our worship service. So we will hear it from Kate first, and we invite our virtual worshipers, wherever you may be, so if you are watching the live stream or picking up the recording later at a more convenient time, please join in. Your words will be on your screens, and you can sing along or say the words out loud with us. So come, Christians, join to sing. Thank you, Kate. to say something about this hymn. Okay, are you ready? Look at it. Take a look at the words, right? You sing hallelujah, amen, nine times in this hymn. Nine times, starting with the first row. So guess what? Each time we sing it, we don't need to look into our hymnals. We can do hallelujah, amen. Got it? Yes. Okay, Kate, an introduction. Are we ready to go? Nine times, everybody. Ready? Kate, just give us. Do your amen. Sing. Come, Christians. prayer of the day. Loving God, it is good to be with you in company of the assembly. When we seek you, we find you. When we pray, you respond. When we listen, your voice sounds. Make your presence palpable in the places we gather. We come to be formed, informed, and transformed by your lavish and bountiful love for your glory, and for all you hold with your heart. Amen. And here it is, that special moment when each week we pass the pass, peace of Christ to each other, and for those in the sanctuary, wander freely. We will sing peace be with you as many times as we need to, followed by the Gloria Patri. And again, at this moment, we invite all our virtual worshipers, wherever you may be, to think in your mind's eye of all the people in your life you wish to pass the peace of Christ to today. And so, here we go, everyone. Passing of the peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Oh, 
Thank you, Kate. First scripture reading this morning is from Job chapter 42 verses 1 through 6 and 10 through 17. I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. You asked, who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. You said, listen now and I will speak. I will question you and you shall answer me. My eyes have heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. After Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. All his brothers and sisters and everyone who had known him before came and ate with him, and each one gave him a piece of silver and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the former part. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. And he also had seven sons and three daughters. The first daughter he named Jemima, and the second Kexia, and the third Karen Hapuk. Nowhere in all the land were, the f were there found women as beautiful as Job's daughters, and their father granted them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years. He saw his children and their children to the fourth generation, and so Job died an old man and full of years. Here ends the reading. And now let's gather for the Lord's Prayer. Our oh, Father, who art hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of transformation and restoration. Gracious God, break our hearts for what breaks yours. Forgive us for hearts that are sometimes cold with indifference. Forgive us for hearts sometimes hard with intractability. Forgive us for hearts closed with isolation. Open our hearts fully to compassion and companionship with our neighbor and your vision of a beloved kingdom come. Amen. Beloved, your hearts bears the heart of God with the Holy One's grace. Heartbreak can transform into compassion, mutuality, and ministry that makes the love of God real in the world. A moment for all of God's children. You just heard the reading from Job where he gets the happy ending. It's wonderful to have a happy ending. That's how all fairy tales end. In our second reading, we're going to hear about a happy beginning. And beginnings can be just as joyous whether it's the birth of a child or a wedding, but it's 
not the end of something where you know the, the whole story. It's just the beginning of something that has some more work to come ahead. And you don't know how it's going to turn out. So they're both joyful things, but one has uh, one is an ending where you know the whole story, and the other is just a start. Thank you. And now we're going to join our voices once again. And this time we are looking at number 586. 586. Um, and again, this is, as we often have a quiet moment of reflection musically at this point in worship, I invite you, if you wish, to remain seated or if you prefer to stand. But whatever you feel is right for you at this moment in worship. So, number 586, open my eyes that I may see. And again, to our virtual worshipers, please, the words are on the screen. And if you like to say them out loud, whisper them to yourself or sing them, please join with us. Kate will play it once through. And thank you, Kate. a time in our service where we lift up prayers <coughs> of concern for those we know, but also prayers to celebrate joys. We'd like to remember everyone mentioned in Pastor Marilyn's <coughs> Tuesday email. We also like prayers for Haley, Matt, and Aaron. As you see, they're not here today. They're uh, apparently losing their cat, Bandit. Oh. So they're preparing for that. Uh, there's also uh, prayers for Connie, Henry, Marilyn's husband, Michael, who's recovering from surgery, Francine's daughter, Emily. Are there any others? Yes. Which one? The word Bergen. 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 Jerry, Jerry just passed away. All right. Jerry's family. She just passed. 
Others? Yes, Kelly. Um, I have prayers for um, Tony, who's going through cancer treatment. Tony is cancer treatment. Okay. Uh, Robin, who's also um, is going through cancer treatment. And Robin also. I guess a good PET scan result. Yes, and Laura Allen, um, she kind of she lost her daughter in the oh. um, And uh, Joy, that my nephew and niece had a beautiful baby boy named Chase this week, and everyone for the Lord. That's a joy for a baby boy named what? Chase. Chase. Yes. Michael's uh, first cousin, what was his name again? Greg. Greg. Saviano. Other joys? All right, let's go to the Lord. Oh, yeah, anything online? Yeah. So, um, again, as, as we do every week, we reach out to the community and, and uh, we hear in a number of ways sometimes on our Facebook pages. So as we do every Sunday, we invite you wherever you may be, if you have a joy or a concern, you know, and please let us know and we will include you in our prayer circle, you know, wherever geographically you may be and wherever spiritually you may be, we're here and we wish to celebrate and we wish to keep you company. So you can contact using Facebook, the two Facebook pages with comments you can email us, find us on, you know, you can Google us if you're not sure where we are, and you can find the email. So please reach out. We're here and we're listening. So, and this morning, um, there's, we say good morning to the people who are watching. Hi, Connie. And um, there's not something in on this Facebook page, but I'm going to share with you stuff that's coming in from the community, which I count as all this. So <clears throat> last Sunday, if you recall, um, it happened on Saturday, a missing dog. Do we remember the missing dog that was running up and down? Well, <clears throat> when I, I announced it, everybody keep a lookout for the missing dog. So the dog got found, right? And here's the real, here's the wonderful part of the connection. So I was on my way to a concert I was singing in immediately after worship. And it was Mike who got hold of me and said, it found the post and said, the dog's found. So I was really, I could go off and sing my heart out because Mike had told me that the dog was now found. And then there was a whole exchange on Facebook about, but the dog had not, had been found but had not yet reconnected with its owner. So, <clears throat> The people who found the dog, there are a couple, they, they live down here and they come, they walk past a lot, and every day they sit on our bench and read their Bible, all right? So, so we have a connection here. And they have a dog too. Well, it turns out that they were out there and they saw this little dog whipping down Haskell Ave on Saturday night with the leash attached because the man had knocked on my door on Saturday and distraught. <clears throat> so they grabbed the leash, and they got the dog, but you know, no idea whose dog it was. And so they took the dog home, and then it so happened that their dog had died a couple of days before. A young dog had died, and the gentleman's son was just, this was his, you know, and just distraught. But suddenly, here was this other dog that they had found. And so what happened was that the found dog slept two nights with the son while they were finding out who the owner was. So there was a whole healing around the fact of the lost dog and our community reaching out. So I just, and I just heard that, that, that part of the story when I was coming up across here this morning. And I thought, I just have to share it with you, right? Because it's, 
it, it says it all, you know. Um, so, so that was the great news. And the other thing I would like to lift up, this, the couple, um, she's passed her first trimester and they're having their baby. So we send, we put them on our prayer list for a healthful, happy and helpful baby. And maybe they'll get another dog. Maybe that will happen too. You never know. So really, everyone, it was those connections, you know, and it's what we, what we do as a church, you know. It doesn't matter whether you sit in the pew, it's wherever you are, we're here. And we make the connections and miracles happen. Thank you, Gloria. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, thank you for connecting us, bringing us together so that we can make each other happier, better, and all in all, do your work. We hold up all of these people that can use some comfort or help or good news, and we thank you for all those things that we are celebrating. The found dog, uh, new children coming, And all, we acknowledge we need your help to deal with this life. Thank you for all you do for us. Give us the strength to do as you would have us do. Amen. Not the scripture I wanted. I wanted the Hebrews one.
so sorry, don't remember the exact chapter and verse. But I'll give you a brief synopsis. Uh, there's a tradition for the Jews that the priests always come from the tribe of Levi. That was established by Moses when they left Egypt. And that's the priesthood that became a problem for Jesus. And that's the priesthood that the early Christians rejected and left. And so the justification for this is that the very first priest in the traditions of the Old Testament, long, but long for when, when Abraham was just wandering around, before there was anybody in Egypt, uh, was Mechesnachik, Medek. Uh, and he was, he was the leader of the town of Salem, which later became Jerusalem. And he was the very first priest, and he wasn't from any of the um, Abraham, well, any of the tribes. So it's established then that Jesus can be the new priesthood in the same way that he was a priest. So that's kind of complicated stuff. I'd be happy to talk more about Machesna Kick, the dick, um, later. But what I would like to talk about is first the, um, the, the Job reading. And there, Job gets his happy ending. Is this story believable? Is it real? We're told Job was from Uz. That was, he was from away. He isn't mentioned anywhere else in the Old Testament. How could it really happen that Job gets so completely restored, even new sons and daughters? I had doubts this story could possibly be true. It must be a fable with a good point, but a, a fable or, or a fairy tale. But then, my brother got restored, much like Job did. David had really lost it. He hid from friends and family and drank until he ended up in the emergency room. From there, he was shipped to rehab. From rehab to, hosp to hospice. And the doctor said, there's no way he's going to make it. So there's nothing we can do for him. He did this three times. He took this marriage around three times. Finally, his wife saw their assets draining away and divorced him. So he ended up on Medicaid. I had given him up for dead. Then he says... He swears, one day, he finally found himself at the pearly gates. Much to his relief, the gatekeepers got some kind of telepathic message and said, sorry, you have unfinished business back on earth. Something about that changed him. It took a while for his brain to get back to normal, but he is his old, pre-alcohol, opinionated self. My brothers and I and an old high school friend take him up to, with us to camp when we go hunting. His wife picks him up to go to camp with the grandkids. We may not have any idea what God is up to or why. <laughs> But believe me, God can do miracles. But you do need to be ready. For the Hebrew reading, I want to dig into an old question from the first century that is not often wrestled with today. Most denominations have settled on their perspective of the role of the priesthood. <coughs> but I think we should wrestle with this question for ourselves because our denomination puts a lot of responsibility on us, the parishioners, 
to form our own faith journey. Yes, it's one of those journeys where you never actually get to the end, at least in this life. So, to let you decide your view on this deep question, we go back to Jesus' day. To review, Jesus had to be put to death because he was challenging the ruling Jewish priesthood. The priesthood had become oppressive as they collaborated with the Roman occupiers, extracting more and more taxes to support everyone from the emperor in Rome to the local priests. The early Christians broke from this way of worship and worshiped together, guided only by occasional visits by an apostle or evangelist. They were persecuted by the priesthood and did not see a need at first to create a new one. But human nature, being what it is, they began to miss having someone to tell them what to believe. After all, our relationship with God is confusing and complicated. In this letter to the Hebrews, I don't know who wrote it, but whoever it is um, has pointed out to them that they do have a new, improved priesthood, and it is Jesus himself. <coughs> Jesus' good news is what they, we, should believe, instead of what a human priest says to believe. So the reading goes into three ways Jesus provides a better priesthood than the only one the Jews had since Moses led them out of Egypt, the same one that put Jesus to death. First, Jesus' sacrifice was, is, will be a permanent forgiveness, not a temporary one like the old priesthood, where you had to constantly come back to buy more forgiveness. Second, Jesus was now an immortal priesthood. He wasn't going to die or retire. and require a search committee. Third, Jesus was without sin. I'm in no position to throw the first stone and say what sins the old priesthood had, but apparently half your money went to a sacrifice for the priest's sins so God would accept their sacrifice for <coughs> yours. That tells you something. So what does your priesthood look like? A priesthood that is only in heaven seems a little remote. Is the good news really all you need? Is Jesus' sacrifice on the cross all you need if you really want forgiveness? Or would you feel better if you were told to say a few Hail Marys too? Everyone has different needs and different ways to find forgiveness, to find faith, to find God. Every Christian denomination has some kind of helpers to help you receive the blessings of Jesus' priesthood. Some are even called priests. There is a wide variety of church environments out there with different levels of direction. We encourage you to find your own path to faith. And we'll help you on that journey any way we can. So let's talk. Maybe together we can find Jesus for you and for me.
Generosity begins as a decision from the heart. It reflects care and concern for the needs of the world, as well as trust for the abundance and plenty of God's <coughs> creation. Let us give from the gifts we have been given as a sign and act of faithfulness. We'll now take the offer. Join me in the prayer of dedication and thanksgiving. Loving God, bless us with increased generosity, trust, and faithfulness. Receive these gifts as an offering of praise. May needs be met, lives be changed, and hearts be warmed through our giving. Amen. And now, let us join our voices once again for number 323. 323 in our hymnals, wonderful words of life. And again, the words will be on the screen for our virtual worshipers. So wherever you may be, join in, whisper them, sing them, hold them close. Kate will play the melody once through, and then we will sing all three verses. Thank you, Kate. Jesus, only Savior, sanctify. 
take heart, for God goes with you. Therefore, may your heart love fully and boldly. May your heart love loudly and actively. May your heart love faithfully and miraculously. Go in peace and love.